This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the law offices of Young Woldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital. Well, hey, everybody, this is Louis Amistoy, and uh, I am the Vice President of Content here at the Bakersfield California in TBC Media, and uh, this is Strictly Business. And uh, this is one of my favorite shows uh, to do. And actually, I don't think I've done it actually before, Hillary. But uh, Hillary's over here. Hillary Haynes from the Chamber of Commerce uh, sitting over there in, in uh, the news desk. And we're joined, though, today a very important topic. We're going to spend the next hour talking to David Malazzo of Macroscopic. It's a Bakersfield-based, uh, I guess, an IT business, more or less. Right. And he's been here for 14 years. And, uh, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about Apple products. And uh, David, uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, your background uh, in, in the business world of using Apple products uh, for, for business. Well, thanks, Lewis. Um, yeah, so I have an Apple consultancy, and uh, we've been working with all sorts of organizations uh, for almost about 20 years now um, as they integrate Apple tech into their organization. And it used to be just Macs and advertising agencies. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how, we, right. how this began. And then over time, you know, Apple has become quite a dominant force uh, all around, not only in, in kind of personal technology, but in business and whatnot. Well, one of the things that's interesting about that, and we, and we talk about that here all the time, is that you still see that sort of very rigid IT structure um, that's Microsoft uh, certified. You know, sure. so Windows is, is everything you know. I mean, we look at it around um, uh, different businesses, especially government. They use, you know, it's like, oh, we can only use only use PCs, right? but Apple's making strong inroads into this area now, right? really came from CEOs that wanted to use an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of funny. At IT uh, infrastructure and the IT staff, right. and they said, you know, this is a Microsoft shop, and that's all we're going to use, and take those Apple products out of here. And the CEOs came in and said, hey, guys, uh, I'm kind of the boss, and I want to make this work, so figure it out. Right. And over time, that's kind of bled further and further through the ranks. Um, and now we really see this sort of agnostic approach to technology, where it doesn't matter what kind of device you use, whether it's an Android or an Apple, if you have a PC on your desk, so many things are web-based, and so many things interact with one another that you don't really have to stay in one ecosystem. You can kind of pick and choose the best tools for the job. I think that's the thing that people have had a hard time getting their arms around, is how much the the cloud has changed that access. And so uh, personally, I have an Android device at home uh, that I use for like as a tablet and then, you know, I have an iPhone and, and uh, different, different, different ways of accessing it, but I can get into Google Drive all the same. Right. doesn't matter what yeah. you're, what, you know, what kind of device you're on. Yeah. Um, there's also this concept of continuity mm-hmm. where uh, you start a project on one device, your PC on your desk, and then you have to go to lunch and you take your tablet with you and you want to work a little bit on that project. And so you keep on going. Right. Um, and then you're on the bus between, you know, as you're commuting and you take your phone out and you kind of review it a little bit more, maybe change a typo or two. Um, but it's all inside some cloud environment, so it doesn't matter what device you're using, you're working on the same document across all these different gizmos. You know, and if, how how tough is that? And we've got slides to show here in, in, a, in a minute here, but I just want to get, how tough is that culturally for people who have been used to working a certain way to sort of transition? I, I think, you know, even in our, uh, here at the Californian, we use Google Docs quite a bit. Sometimes people will say to us, "Well, how do I, ins- how do I, ins- can you install that for me?" No, no, it's on the web. You can go and go to your browser. How, right. Do you do you spend a lot of time talking to people about that? I do. It's a bit of a paradigm shift, and it also scares people. Mm-hmm. They think all their data is out there in the world, um, you know, being accessed by by bad people. Right. Um, We've been using the cloud for years. Email is a cloud-based service in most environments. Uh, the cloud isn't all that scary. It's just a, a piece of branding. Uh, but yeah, there is a cultural shift in where we keep our stuff. Uh, you can keep things on your device, but that really is limiting. Okay. And um, you kind of have to give over a little bit. Uh, you know, I want my phone to know where my location is. Are there bad things that can happen there? Yeah, but it's also really cool because now the phone can tell me things around my surroundings. Right. Um, so there's there's a it's a cost benefit analysis. You got to kind of weigh what are you giving up, but what are you getting in return. It's it's a very interesting co- topic because it's sort of demystifying the technology. And, and I and I see this a lot personally with Facebook. People will say, oh, I don't want all my information out there. Well, you know, you can lock that down quite a bit. There's tools within Facebook 
to limit that access uh, or limit access, people's access to your information to a certain degree. Yeah, and some of the same people that are so scared about releasing their data have Facebook profiles that are fully public and they're exactly. they're talking about their vacation while they're gone. Right. And you know, no one's at our house right now. Right. Great time to, you know, yeah. burglarize that come, joint. Come over and ha hang hang out with us. Yeah. All right, well, we've got a lot of stuff we got to get to. There's a lot of good things in here. I, uh, the first segment we're going to talk a little bit about some of the, the tablets and some of the things you can do with tablets. Um, we've got four segments here today. So let's let's get to this this, this is your presentation here, right? Yeah, I kind of built a few slides just okay. to kind of walk us through. Um, we'll start with the hardware. Okay. Um, I'm an Apple guy. I tend to hang out in Apple land uh, more often than not. Right. Um, Surface tablets and Android tablets are certainly very viable. Uh, but today we're going to focus a bit on Apple stuff. Uh, they've got three tiers now. They've got an iPad, or the original iPad, which is kind of what's in front of me. Uh, they made a smaller one, and then they just came out with a, with a big sucker called the iPad Pro. And so these devices each kind of have a... I mean, they're the same, but each one has a little bit of a niche element that gives it a unique feature. Now, I um, have two iPads, and I have not played with the iPad Pro, but I just want to get, kind of get your thoughts on the iPad Pro initially. Yeah, it's, it's striking. It's, it's really big. Mm -hmm. And for my use, I don't think I'm, I'm going to jump into it right now. Right. Um, it's not going to be a laptop replacement entirely, yeah. but... It certainly does. Well, this is a laptop replacement to a certain degree. I've got a keyboard attached to the thing. Uh, I use it for all my note taking. Uh, the iPad Pro just kind of takes that to the next level, but it also has a extremely fine digitizer screen and a pencil that comes along with it, or you can buy as an accessory. And so, if you're an artist or an architect, someone that's going to do drafting, uh, it's really strong to be able to to sketch right on the surface of it. Uh, it does a uh, palm rejection, so you can set your wrist on it, and you're not going to start you know, smearing right, the image there. Right. Um, so Apple's baked in some pretty slick tech, and that's only on the iPad Pro. So it's sort of just uh, going it, into it, that it's one. It's interesting that the, the people who would use that, I mean, it seems like it's designed for a creative market more than anything. But do you see other business cases for it? Would it be something that a physician might use because it feels more like a like a notepad? Or how would you how would you use that, that thing? Yeah. I, you know, I've only seen a couple of... The, uh, the iPad Pro's in the field now. One's at a, at a doctor's office, mm, okay. uh, but he's a crazy you know, Apple geek, right. so he buys one of everything. Right. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm sure architecture and design, right. um, if you wanted to mount one on the wall, there's so many use cases for these things now. Um, we see them mounted in cars. Uh, we're doing field data collection. Uh, they're inside of restaurants. Uh, Tembler Brewing, we use iPads for point of sale, so all the cash registers are iPads. We've got a mobile iPad mini that people go around and, and check out folks in the shop. Um, they're really becoming so prolific in every single industry. I was so surprised one day. I saw, I can't remember if it was one of the delivery drivers or somebody, or maybe it was even a service where they, the iPad was basically attached to them. And these guys were um, were just, I mean, it was armored up, of course, but how they were using it and how that fundamentally changed probably their their work day, you know, having oh, access to all that information. Yeah, there, there are, um, I don't know if you've been to Disneyland in a while or a theme park, you mm. might get, get a, uh, someone doing a survey at the front. Yeah, right. Um, and they'll have it around their neck, kind of plopped open, um, using their body as a support, right. and they're kind of typing on it. There's so many different cases and uh, slings to throw it on your body in a way that kind of facilitates the work that you do. Do you run into people who who are who have not bought one yet or played with one, and, and you know how do you work with them on uh, people like that, or what do you tell them? Why would you have one? Uh, why not, man? So <laughs> much fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You know, I think the. I don't try and push technology on folks. Mm -hmm. um, I get a little religious about my Apple stuff, but really they're just tools in the tool chest. You know, uh, they're to solve problems. And what problems do you want to solve? Um, I do teach a class at the BC Levin Institute for Lifelong Learning, okay. um, sort of a 50-plus uh, group of folks. And a lot of them, this is their first computer. Right. And so it becomes a fun exercise to, you know, while we're talking about an iPad and turning it on, and, oh, here's email email. Uh, next thing you know, we're doing a deep dive on what spam means and why you don't want to load images uh, right off the bat from messages you get from random people, wow. and, uh, Nigerian fraud, and I mean, all of it comes into play. So it really becomes computer 101. Uh, when iPads and iPhones first came out, they had to be tethered to a computer to be functional. Right. You had to sync them, you had to sync all your content back and forth. Now they're wholly independent computers all by themselves. They don't really require uh, a big brother or some parent device to manage them. When you look at um, iPads, you know, what are the things for you that are sort of critical, critical apps, critical uh, accessories, and, and what, what would you, how would you, you know, tell somebody 
you know, this is what you're going to really need for this, this device. Yeah, starting with hardware, um, I tend to look at uh, cases and keyboards. Um, this is a Belkin keyboard here. There's tons yeah. of people that make them. Right. Um, and I love this one because it's this the, the device detaches. The right. keys are backlit. I mean, it's a lot like a laptop. Yeah, absolutely. And then if I don't want to use the keyboard and I want to go in the kitchen, I've kind of got a case on this already. Right. And I can move around. And it uses magnets to stick itself back and you know, put it right together. Okay. Um, and there, you know, thousands of these things. Exactly. Um, so, but I you know, start by looking Some at Some in case. leather cases or gold or, you know, have pictures of your animals like Hillary has, right? <laughs> so you can bake a dog into it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so I c- kind of recommend starting there. And then there are all sorts of accessories, mm-hmm. the, the Apple Pencil uh, or a... Which is a highly, which is a really interesting one too, because, you know, when you look at when they re- released the Pro... There was the Apple sort of people were saying, well, you know, this is interesting because Steve Jobs was sort of dismissive of a stylus. It went very much so. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, you had to whittle your finger down um, to, to hunt and peck, and we don't yeah. want a stylus. Throw them away. Right. Because um, he started uh, really fighting against the Palm Trio, yeah. if we go way back. Right, yeah. Um, and it was trying to show some distinction between what the iPhone was going to do. Um, well, we find lots of places a stylus can be useful. Uh, medical environments where you don't want a lot of hands on a device when it's passing among folks for germs. Right. So a stylus can be nice. Apple Pencil is quite different than a stylus because it's really meant for art and drawing very um, Very precise. fine, yeah, precise, yeah. Exactly. It's not something you're going to do to, like, tap around. Uh, for that, your finger works well. Or they have little nubby styluses that uh, are styli uh, that you can tap to do that. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so accessories uh, would include... That that uh, the well they call it the pencil right yeah this device is the Apple pencil okay which is actually they stole the name because Apple loves to do that yeah. from another company called Paper who has a device called the pencil nice and Apple just said well who cares we're going to take it <laughs> sorry that's kind of <laughs> Apple's mantra though well remember. yeah Cisco owned the term iPhone Apple said that's ours we're going to take it we'll, we'll take settle that. it later we'll settle it later yeah. Uh, the whole, the, the, I love, I always love the story about how they went into Xerox and, you know, basically oh. stole, you know, the, the whole, the mouse and everything like that. It's one of the more fascinating stories. It really is. Palo Alto Research Center was making some amazing stuff. And, uh, I, I forget the exact anecdote. It's pretty complex about how, uh, he finagled his way in there, but, um, the engineers were just pulling their hair out. So you were letting Steve like walk yeah. around and, and look at this stuff. Right. And he left and went right to work. I mean, right it was work, just right like, okay, guys, exactly. now we know what we're doing. Let's get everyone on the phone and we're going to figure out how we're going to build those exact same things with our folks. Uh, what else do you recommend as far as accessories go? Um, some of the mounting options are pretty nifty. Mm-hmm. Um, here's one that's a, a car mount. Oh, wow. Um, but they've got every permutation of this as well. Um, kiosks to have them, you know, locked in a case. We do, at a security firm I work with, we do front door check-in. Wow. So, um, using a little app, you know, uh, they can't turn the iPad off or on. It just always stays in this please check-in mode. Um, I've seen them at wineries where you can sign up for mailing lists. So instead of having to take a person's time. Um, and so these enclosures can be really useful because they can get the technology safely in in the middle of the public arena without having to worry about people messing with the stuff and turning it off or being a trickster. You know, I don't know if you have this in your um, presentation or not, but, you know, pers- you know, I've seen it, some really um, amazing modifications to the iPads from the video or photography perspective where mm. you've seen these guys mod these things out with, um, or I should say modify, I'm using l- slang here, but they've modified them out to the way where they put them in a case and they can mount lenses to them. Um, mm. They... They they change the way the thing takes pictures or or shoots right. video as right. well because it's an amazing video camera as well especially the, yeah. the newer versions. Well, and the the newest iPhone 6s actually has a 4K video recorder built in. I mean, the, the lens can do 4K. I mean, it's yeah. remarkable. And yeah, they've got little cases where you can then attach lenses like you're saying, right? Uh, and put them in pretty you know, economically cams. too. Oh, yeah. You can buy in for $1,000. Yeah. Let's say that's your budget. You can be a full movie studio. Right? It's interesting. Um, Don Martin over at the Metro Galleries uh, started shooting photos with his iPhone. He'd go on runs, and he would take f- photos with right. his iPhone. And then um, he bought one of these little lenses, and it, I think it really exponentially improved his photography. So much so that he did, you know, he did his own little uh, you know, gallery showing <laughs> of his iPhone. Oh, he did? Yeah. I didn't get a chance Instagram. to see that. Yeah, oh, very, great. very cool. So, I mean, it just shows you how many things they've changed. Um, to you, wh- what is the biggest change? I mean, I think one of the things that I, I look at is that it, it's given people, it's changed the way we take money, it's changed the way, you talked about Tumblr as being one that's a cash register, a lot mm-hmm. of people use them as cash register. Is that how it's changed things too? That's certainly side? one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you go to a farmer's market, it's no longer a cash transaction. Can be, right. but more often than not, you see a square or a little PayPal slider, and you know it's, it's lubricated 
uh, merchants to, uh, to make transactions much more simply. Uh, that's certainly one. Uh, data collection in the field, uh, you know, instead of capturing a lot of stuff on paper and doing data entry later, right. you know, putting it, let, letting that data be born digital, as we like to say, nice. and immediately start databasing it and then doing uh, analysis. So it's letting businesses become more strategic in their decision making. I mean, really, you can take any industry and do a little bit of a deep dive and find um, medical x-rays and how fast a doctor gets films uh, right to his iPad mini in his pocket, uh, which perfectly fits into a doctor's or even pocket. Or even do the basic um, you know, vitals, too. They can do the vitals on those things now, too. It's right. incredible. There's a case made for the iPhone that has two contacts on the back uh, that a doctor can send you home with, and you can put your thumbs on the back and it will do um, some analysis of, of heart and Interesting. whatnot and immediately send that, those results off to the doc. Wow. So it's, it's getting strange out there. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more here on Strictly Business. We're talking to David Malazzo from Macroscopic about all the great cases you can use for technology. We'll talk more about it. We've got a lot of ground to cover here. We'll be right back after these messages.